Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakwadash, the Bawanis to the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to like out there, donors work of faith and labor of love, truth, sincerity. All right, I want to get into a uh, quick topic based upon um, these few scripture here, and I want to um, entitle it uh, "What We Look What We Look Forward to." All right. So this is uh Second Peter three and um ten, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be, in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right. And. You know, just thinking upon this, obviously, we in a heavy, heavy season of, of prophecy, man. <laughs> How they say in the world, they say, uh, this is of biblical proportions, you know. This is exactly what it is. This is exactly what we, that's in the spirit of Yahweh Bashmi Yahushai, have been waiting for, man. We look forward to the new heavens and the new earth, you know. We're looking forward to this place being destroyed. We're looking forward to uh, just the whole changing of the guards, so to speak, you know, the whole power shift, the, the, the kingdom being translated from wickedness unto righteousness to where everybody else is looking to get along within the society when that's not the case. And that's not how it should be, you know, because the, the, the Lord said that in, um, in the book of uh, Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah 13. Lock these ads on this damn app. <clears throat> so this is um Isaiah 13 and um 13 and um so the 13 it says, Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as a chaste row. And as a sheep that no man taketh up, they they shall every man turn to his own people and and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Why? Because within the society, you know, now they're trying to give um you know props to those that is standing with, you know, Jake and different things like that. Hey, but we know that this whole thing is about the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's what it's all about, us as being Israelites. It's not about the rest of the people that's out there. Because those that are trying to join unto them and thinking that we're going to be on that kumbaya spirit, hey, the Lord is not for that whatsoever. That's not what we were brought here for. We were brought here to serve our captivity. The other nations to take advantage of us, you know. Uh, for Esau to, to be the whipping stick to us, for us to go through all of these sad turmoils ultimately to bring this place to nothing but death and destruction. And that's what is desperately upon America. And that's what America needs, man. Desperately. You know, so where the world is, uh, you know, they going through it, we going through it, but ultimately, you know, people are going to be uh, happy at the thought of getting some sort of what they think is. Uh, justice people are gonna be happy at the thought of you know uh uh whenever you know Esau makes corona that die down and they thinking that they're gonna be going back to their normal lives they're gonna be happy but we're not gonna be happy because we're looking for the end of this place man you know we continue on with our daily lives just as anybody else but we know that we have so much more to look forward to and that's that's only because of what we are promised through the spirit of Yahweh Bashmi Shah and from our forefathers that um you know Abraham Isaac and Jacob you know what I'm saying? And how the Lord promised us as a nation what we would inherit. 
in the end. That's what we're looking forward to. There's nothing here within America that we could be looking so so great forward to that, that can ever change that position within our minds. Because <laughs> look at this earth. It's not worth it, man. Nothing of this earth is worth it. The women, <laughs> uh, wine, the money, none of it, none of it within this world is worth it, man. The, the earth itself is, is tarnished. None of it within this world is worth it, man. You know? None of it whatsoever. Um, let me think of John. <clears throat> this is John 16 and 20. Uh, yeah, I want to start here. Uh, John 16 and 20. Um, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. <clears throat> and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. So, ultimately, you know, when you, you can apply it to back then, uh, as far as, you know, people rejoicing when the Lord uh, was taken out of the earth. And at that time, you had, you know, the disciples and other people that the true followers, the true believers of Yahweh Shah, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, they were sorrowful. But he said, what? Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. So that was us back then being sorrowful. We're in a sorrowful state now. But what? Ultimately, you know, we're slowly being brought back into that joy. The closer we get to the kingdom, the closer we get to that inheritance, the closer we get to, Lord willing, uh, 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 surviving this whole thing, you know, like none other, you know, and surviving doesn't mean necessarily that we're actually going to uh, live until the end, but surviving meaning what? Withstand the mark of the beast, the RFID chip, withstand any trials, tribulations, temptations that Esau has for us in store, man. You know, and I stand true to the name of Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shah. That's ultimately what it's all about at the end of the day, man. Because if you're not doing that, if you're not truly standing up for righteousness, then what are you standing up for? Because the Lord is, is looking for those that are going to stand up for him, and that's us. People think that, you know, standing in you know, out there, uh, you know, for justice and all that, you think you're really doing something. There's nothing that you can do uh, up against Esau, man. You know, it's nothing that you can do. Um, yeah, because ultimately what the Lord set him up to be in his stead, the Lord set him up to be the whipping mm -hmm. stick. This is, this is his time right now. He's shining. <laughs> but his light is about to be very dim in a second. All right? So, um, this is uh, Psalms. 94 and um uh let me start at verse 12 psalm 94 and 12 blesses the man whom thou chastenest O lord and teaches him out of thy law he he chastened us as a people you know he teaching us out of the law okay his words his ways his commandments that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked so this is what we're going through now the Lord has chastened us. The Lord has been teaching us to come back into who we are, to come back into our inheritance, to come back into him, you know, our true and living power, so that in the end, what? That he may give us rest from all our days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. Because that pit is slowly but surely being digged for the wicked, and we can see it, man. We can clearly see it. But those that's not in the spirit, what do they see? All they can see is the, the so-called uprising that that. They claim that we should be doing, which is totally inaccurate. You know, the Lord said, I will not give my glory unto another. So the Lord got to get that glory, man. The Lord got to take uh, uh, Esau down, man. You know, not us. It's all about the Lord's doings. You know, we we already know uh, 7, 9, 3 and 8, wait ye upon the Lord, man. You know, uh, verse 14, for the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. We are the Lord's inheritance. He promised our forefathers and what the scriptures say, what the Lord is a man of his word. You know what I'm saying? So the Lord is not going to cast us off. And that's why you still still seeing on different social media platforms. You say, oh, oh where's your God at now? Or oh, where's your Jesus at now? Where, where's this? You know what I'm saying? Or oh, where's the God of the Bible? It's all, hey, man, you don't even got to, if you don't believe, you ain't even got to worry about it. You ain't even got to worry about it. You know? You thinking that the Lord don't have something for us. You thinking that the Lord is just allowing us to suffer and just nothing's ever going to change. It's going to change, but it's not going to change in the way that you want it to change. And that's Jake's problem out here. They want things to go how they want them to go. But you're not the creator. You, you're not the sole ruler, the, 
the supreme being of the universe. You're not the omnipresent or the omnipotent. You know, uh, I forget which correct uh, one it is, but you're not that. And stop. And, and Jake really don't have a, a a king mindset, man. If you're a king, you can do as you please. If you're a king, Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, they the kings of the, of the universe, the kings of the world. They can do and go about things how they please. But people going off of, off that fleshly mind, you can never understand the Lord's ways off of a fleshly mind, man. You have to be in the spirit to understand it, right? Uh, verse fifteen. But judgment shall return unto righteousness. And all the upright in heart shall follow it. And that's what's happening. Judgment shall return unto righteousness. That's what's happening, right? And we see it because we the upright. <clears throat> of verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Okay? So this is what the Lord is asking us to do. But it's not asking us to go out there and to be, you know, in some... Some army war veteran spirit. No, that's that's not that's not the move. <laughs> that's not the move at all. You can't go up against this is Esau and his establishment, his his conglomerate, his hegemony, you know, his rule, his reign. You can't go up against him head up. We gotta our our warfare is spiritual, you know, through this pulling down to the strongholds of the Mosai. That's all we are set to do until the Mosai is set forth to destroy this devil with the brightness of his coming. This is how we stand up, all right? Through the scriptures, through the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Because what's going to be the stability of our times? The knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. What's going to be the stability for the other people? Nothing. That's the, whatever so-called stability that they have is going to crumble. When Esau applies that pressure on some, because what they have is not built on a rock, it's built on it's built on sand, man. We stand we building on a rock, we building upon the foundation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And that's what's gonna get us through this, man. You know? So we looking forward to the destruction of society. We looking forward to better things than than anything we could be offered here within America, punk ass stimulus package or any of this, man. You know? Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So, uh, you know, with that, you know, I hope this segment was edifying. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash, the Bawanas of the Apostles, and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lekab there, doing this work of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. Shalom.